Hello everyone. In this session, I'm going to show you what is OpenCV. And uh, OpenCV means Open Source Computer Vision. So CV stands for Computer Vision. So first of all, let me show you how you can install uh, OpenCV in your Windows operating system. First, uh, what you have to do is you just have to open your command prompt and check if Python is installed in your system or not. First, uh, the first requirement for OpenCV is Python. So let me just type Python hyphen hyphen version okay it's going to say whether whatever version of python you have installed in your system or not okay then you need a installer okay python installer program that is called as pip to install opencv library you can also check the version of the pip version which you are using okay just like by typing pip hyphen hyphen version so it will give you that uh, this is the version of pip which you are installed in your system next uh, to install opencv you just have to use this pip uh, install then type open cv hyphen python hit enter and if it's already installed in your system it will say requirements are satisfied or else it will start downloading open cv in your windows operating system to check if the installation has happened correctly or not for the open cv what you can do is first of all, you can just simply type python in the command prompt itself and we should open up the python shell for us where we could write uh, all the python programs like this like hello colon and hit enter and it is going to give you an output called as hello just like this what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to import uh, the open cv library so let me just say open cv2 and hit enter if you don't get any kind of error uh, message on the screen okay it means we have successfully installed a uh, cv2 library and uh, now since uh, i have not got any kind of error uh, it means we have successfully installed it so now let's check the version of cv2 open cv library so you can say type cv2 dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore now underscore underscore when you give two times it is called as dinder in python so now let me just hit enter and it should give you the version number of cv2 library which we are using in the python okay so the current version is 4.5.5 okay your number and my number can vary depending upon the version number now you can also confirm this uh, using any kind of editor if you have so let me open up my visual studio code so it's going to open up like this okay now first i'll go to file uh, click on open folder and let me go to the desktop and on the desktop i have created a folder called as open cv so let me open that and hit select folder so that is going to open this file location that is open open cv folder from the desktop and it has already uh, let me just show you that folder here so this is the folder which i have uh, on the desktop which has all the images inside this one so which i'll be using in the open cv so let me just uh, go back to the visual studio code so these are all the images and here let me just create a python file uh, let me say it as uh, open cv.py and now here what i have to do is i have to just import uh, the cv2 library first so you can say import cv2 and then you can say print cv2 dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore the gender symbol now save the file click on the terminal click on new terminal uh, let me just maximize the screen and here uh, this is the terminal okay in this terminal you just have to write python let me just redo it once again well here let me just type python and we have to type the name of the file that is opencv.py hit enter and as you can see we are getting 4.5.1 sorry 4.5.5 as the cv2 version which we are using in our open cv library now let me show you like if you are using a pycharm for writing python programs for cv2 okay all you have to do is uh, open pycharm okay your uh, choice of editor is uh, it is based on whatever uh, you want to take okay so first what i'll do is i'll just open pycharm okay and i'll go a file and say new project okay i'll say 
uh, open open cv project okay and i'll just say the interpreter with make available for all the projects and uh, just click on create that's it okay see guys this is like this is how we are going to create a new project uh, called as open cv project and uh, here first thing what you have to do is you have to install a cv2 library for this particular project okay it is done differently in python so let me go to the file and you have to go to settings and there you will have to see your project name over here on the left side okay, if you just uh, expand the project you will get it here so first uh, click on the first option that is called as python interpreter here these are all the inbuilt packages which are already available for the project then you have to click on the plus button and here you will have to type the open cv hyphen python okay so you are going to get this particular library select that library and click on install packages and in few moments it is going to install that library as well okay once installed it is going to give you this uh, uh, statement saying that open cv library has been installed successfully now you can close this you can click on okay and then first uh, what i'll do i'll just create a new package uh, saying that uh, open cv underscore programs okay then inside this package you'll already get one init.py file now i'll right click on that uh, package name go to new and create a python file called as uh, open cv programs now first what you have to do is you have to say import cv2 okay and then uh, you have to print uh, cv2 dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore now save the file right click on that and say run open cv underscore programs and as you can see it has printed the open cv version of this particular open cv which we are which we are using inside PyCharm right now so these are the two things you have to know whether if you are using visual studio code how you have to do it and if you are using PyCharm then how you have to install and use cv2 library so now let's write some code so first uh, what i'm going to do is uh, i need some images so first i'll open this uh, folder location in my explorer so this is that folder where i'm writing all the open cv programs and now here uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to create a new folder just for images so let me keep it as images hit enter okay now on the desktop i have created uh, a folder uh, let me just uh, this, this is not part see the folder where i have all the images in this one so let me just copy all the images and these images uh, i'll make it available in my github account so let me just paste it over here in this file location and we are done so now let's go to our uh, pycharm and start writing some code so here as you can see uh, let me see let me just on this whole folder and see guys these are the all the images in images folder in our project so what i need to do right now is i think uh, i have kept it outside this particular package this images folder so first off let's see how we can read a image by using cv2 library so for reading we have a function called as i am read function which takes two parameters one is the name of the a image and when and another parameter is the flags flags are nothing but the zero one or minus one we can give three these three parameters okay zero is for seeing the image in black and white okay one is for seeing the image in color and minus one is like unchanged so these are the three parameters which you can give okay so let me just remove this page and only write zero so first of all you have to say cv2 dot i am read is a function to read the image okay and it's in this particular folder images so let me just copy right click and say copy path okay so this is the path see this is the absolute path you can have any one of them so let me click on the absolute path itself and click on paste over here and let me just uh, make all the backward slashes to forward slashes very fast let me just put it right over here
like this and here the image which i am going to work with is lina.jpg okay we have an image called as lina.jpg so that is uh, let me show you that image first ah uh, here it is okay so this is the image we are going to be working on so right now this is the full the path as well as the name of the image and then the second parameter okay is i want to see it in grayscale so that is black and white scale so i'm going to say as zero and uh, we'll store this okay let's come to the left side of this and we'll store it as img on the left side okay now if i say uh, print this particular image okay see guys the variable which i have taken to store this image is img if i just print this image right now and if i run this code right now what it will do is it will print all the red green blue pixels of that particular image which we have just read okay and that also is in will be in black and white okay now just to see what our uh, image has read and uh, to show that image on the screen we have something called as i am show function is there okay you are going to show your particular image this variable name that you have to write okay so on the left side you have to say cv2 dot i am show function is there we are going to show this particular image and uh, the window which it is going to be displaying okay so i'm simply going to say uh, you just have to name something for that particular window so i'm going to say display uh, window one okay you can name anything like this so this window is going to display your image this is the image and now you just have to run the program once again okay now if i run this program okay you're not going to be able to see the image because it comes and goes really really fast okay just like a blur it will go up but if you want to hold that image for some particular time then you'll have to use cv2 dot there is a function called as wait key and inside this one you can give as many number of seconds you want to see the image and then close the program so if i say like uh, 5000 okay 5000 milliseconds it takes arguments in milliseconds okay it will stay on the screen for five seconds and then it will go away so uh, at the last you will have to use one function called as destroy all windows so this is the display window which is showing you that image and after five seconds it is going to destroy all the windows like that okay and we have one more function called as destroy window okay that is to use that is used to close any one particular window okay we'll be talking about that in the later of programs but now we'll read this image in grayscale or black and white you can say and we are going to print all the pixels of that and then we are going to display it on the screen that is showing this particular image in this particular window and we will look it for five seconds and then we'll destroy all the windows so let me just run the program once again and as you can see we have got we have got the black and white or grayscale image of this particular person and we stayed for five seconds and it went off okay but now if you don't want to give any kind of time limit or anything you want to show it for the unlimited period of time then you will have to give the parameter as zero okay then when you run this program okay this is going to stay this image is going to stay for as long as possible until you click on this close button okay so this is how you are going to read your image and you can show your image on the screen which you have just read using cv2 library and wait key zero will define unlimited period of time for showing the image and then we are going to destroy all the windows so this is how reading and showing of the image is happening using cv2 library now let me show you how you can make a copy of that uh, this particular image lina.jpg using cv2 library and we'll be doing it in this particular folder itself that is called as images okay to store the store the image or to write the image we have something called as uh, cv2 dot uh, we have function called as i am write function okay i am write function so here we are supposed to mention the folder and then the file name which we want to keep for the new copied version of this uh, particular image uh, so first uh, let us uh, uh, give the argument that this is the image okay this is the image img is the image which we want to copy or write and this has to be in this particular location so let me just uh, copy that uh, whole location one more time and paste it over here but this time i want to keep some other name called as lina underscore copied like this lina underscore copied dot jpg so now let me just save the program and let's run the program okay so as you can see we are getting the black and white uh, image of 
uh, linear.jpg image okay now let me just click on the close button and now let's go to that particular folder and there we should be able to see a one more file that is lina underscore copied file okay and if you just right click on uh, double click on that you can open that particular image and see that you have just uh, written a file okay you have just written an image file using the cv2 library and in that cv2 library you are going to use im write function to write or make another copy of that particular image now the same operation can be performed by the press of any key button from the keyboard so we are going to give the user the opportunity to save the program if he clicks or if he presses the s button of the keyboard and if if at all he doesn't want to save and just close down the program he just have to press the escape button okay so we are going to give a functionality something like that so first of all let me what uh, let me do is uh, uh, let me just uh, uh, read the particular image okay then uh, we'll print that image or uh, we'll not print it at all okay let me just comment off that line and uh, now this is the image which is going to get shown to our on the screen and now here the waiting key okay so let me just capture it as uh, some variable called as k and uh, here uh, let me just get rid of this uh, code which i have written in comments okay and now i'm going to say like uh, if uh, this key pressed that is k if it is equal to equal to 27 27 is the ascii value of escape button if uh, the person has pressed escape or uh, escape button okay then only you just close the program and destroy all the windows which we are seeing on the screen or else okay else if the key is equal to equal to you have to use the ord function okay which takes a the s variable as the argument so here we have to say colon and then we will use this in the indentation of the ord function okay so if at all the user clicks on s then only it will save this file and then what we will say is then only after saving the file you just destroy all windows so let me use destroy all windows function like this okay so first uh, very quickly what i'll do is i'll go to that folder and i'll delete this uh, lina underscore copied file so here it is that file so let me just right click on that and just go to uh, delete option okay and let's click on okay they delete anyways no worries and now see guys we don't have uh, that lina underscore copy dot jpg file here in this particular location okay so first of all what i'll do i'll just run the program and uh, without uh, pressing on SK, uh, s button i'll just press the escape button so let me write it here in comments that uh, for escape button okay ascii value is 27 like that first of all, let me run the code okay so we are running the code and uh, i'm pressing now escape button and uh, we don't save any of those files and we have just uh, exited the program now again let me right click on the program run the code and this time i will press s okay and then it would have saved one image with this particular name that is lina underscore copy dot jpg and let me just go and check it here see that is the file name and then it destroyed all the windows so this is how you can read the image you can show the image and you can give uh, the user option to save the image or just close the particular program directly in cb2 library so the next topic i want to show you is how you can capture live video from a video webcam of your computer so let me just uh, go back here and uh, create a new file let me say right click create a new python file uh, saying uh, capturing live stream and here first of all you have to import the same cv2 library to and uh, from cv2 okay it's from cv2 there is a function called as a video capture okay there's a class so that's why v and c are capital over here okay so we are going to use the constructor and here the first parameter you have to pass is the default camera of your desktop or laptop whichever you are using for default you will have to give it as zero or sometimes minus one Okay, and if you have any additional webcam or something then you will have to give it as one so this time i want to use the default webcam of my particular desktop so i'm going to give it as zero and i'm going to store this uh, as a captured video 
so i'm going to name it as captured video so what what is happening is now cb2 is uh, using my default webcam of my particular desktop and it is capturing a video and that is going to happen frame by frame so you'll have to say while while it is true while it is true okay from the captured video okay captured video you read each and every frame so that i will store it as uh, each frame is equal to the captured video which it is reading frame by frame and the result of this particular reading operation is either it will be true or false so you can just name it as uh, one more variable on the left side that is result okay this result will be either true or false depending upon the frame which is able to read or not and then whatever the frame is getting read we will show it on the screen so cv2 dot i am show is the function to show that each and every frame which we have captured okay and for that what we'll have to do is we'll have to display it as a window so in double quotes you will have to say uh, display display window one or something okay you can name anything so each and every frame okay will be shown to us in this particular window and now after showing that particular image okay i will give the option for the user okay to quit showing uh, the function to us or quit showing the video to us by just giving it an if if statement saying that if uh, cv2 uh, cv2 dot there is a function called as wait key okay and i'll simply pass it as one as a parameter and one more fun function and i will say you will have to use the and operator you will have to say this mask uh, that is zero x ff okay so this is the mask which i'm going to use and say if i have ordered odr is the function and use the q button okay from the keyboard to put the program and we will say break the program here itself no need to show that image anymore to us okay the frames which we are capturing from the video okay then finally what we have to say is you have to release the captured video also so there is a release function which you are supposed to use and then cv2 has to destroy all the windows which it is getting displayed for us so destroy all windows like this okay so captured window also gets released as well as it is going to destroy all the windows as well i will miss a code here so let me correct that and let's save the program okay now let me run the code okay it's going to start the webcam of my system and it is going to capture the live stream hi guys okay so this is how we are going to capture live stream and now when i press on the q button from the keyboard the window is going to go away like this okay so this is how you are going to capture the live stream from your default webcam that is my i am using a webcam from my desktop now if you want to show same video in grayscale or black and white scale you can say what you have to do is once while reading this particular image the each and every frame what you have to do is i'll say like a gray uh, video okay i want a black and white so i'll say gray video and i'll use cv2 dot okay there is a function called as cvt color okay cvt color so in this one what image you have to make it as gray color that you will have to pass first so let me pass it over here okay and now you have to say the conversion rate so there is one function in cv2 that is called as color underscore so we have so many functions which we can use so but now i want to use the one which says the blue green and red scale to gray scale so this is the one i want to use so let me use that one okay so once it is done then this uh, video a uh, gray underscore video variable that you will have to pass it inside this instead of each and every frame because now we have converted each and every frame into grayscale one and that is what we are going to show it on the screen so let me just uh, save the file and run it once again and you will be able to see the black and white video getting shown to us this time so hi guys so as you can see now the entire video is in black and white so now let me just click on the Q button 
and the video is going to disappear so this is how you can show any particular image in either color or in grayscale now let me just show you uh, there are few properties of this video which is getting captured uh, which you can print it on the screen if suppose uh, uh, i want to know whether uh, this uh, video is getting captured or not whether it is true or false uh, so what you can do is you can simply write a print statement saying that this variable which we have taken as a video captured captured video so let me just say here uh, paste it here and say dot there is one function called as is opened okay, is opened or not okay now to say this whether uh, this answer either it will be if it is capturing the video correctly then it will either be true and if it is not then it will be false so that is the same statement which we have used here okay and uh, instead of this uh, variable true which we have passed over here you can also give the same thing uh, let me just copy this and paste it over here instead of the true function we can pass it over here just like this like while that you have opened okay is uh, opened and you are reading that file okay then only you show us uh, you convert it into the grayscale and then uh, display it on the screen okay but uh, before displaying also we have uh, some properties which we can use okay that is uh, getting the height and width of the captured frame and everything and that also you can print it on the screen say let let me just write a print statement and say captured video dot okay then we have to say there is a get function okay in the get function we have to pass cv2 dot okay and there is a cap okay, uh, so, uh, we have to write it in capital so there is a cap property frame width okay i want to capture the width okay just like that i have one more so let me write it in print statements same same thing again captured video dot get yes uh, from cv2 library dot cap so just like height okay just like width we have height also so let me just make it as width first and then let me just print it as height okay see guys here we, I can get the width and height both together by just by using these two parameters in the get function of cv2 library okay, and that is what we are printing on the screen and since I have done it in while loop okay, it is going to keep printing that until the video closes so let me just remove of extra white faces those are not required so this is the entire program and now let's run the code once again so let me just run the file and here as you can see as soon as the webcam starts okay the first uh, first parameter which is going to get printed on the screen is true means it has started uh, the video and it is going to show the video also and now if you just uh, keep scrolling down so as you can see it is keep showing me the video now let me just go back and here on the screen if i keep scrolling down as you can see the width and height of the video which is getting captured is displaying on the screen so until i click on the Q button okay that is not going to stop so let me uh, just come up here and click on the Q button and now it is saying we have closed the video and we have stopped the height and width of printing on the screen okay since it was in a while loop we are we were getting those continuous okay so this is how you are going to get the features of the window or the frame which you are capturing from the video now let me show you how we can save that uh, video which we are streaming which we are captured from the live stream so for that what we have to do is we have to create an object uh, of the video writer class so let me just uh, uh, come up here at the top okay so this is this will start capturing the live stream and after that what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create a, uh, a variable called as out and uh, let's create uh, cv2 dot so to capture we have video capture to write we have video writer class so let me just say video writer and it is not full cc it's just a video writer oh sorry it's just underscore four cc and uh wait one second first let's create an object of video writer class okay and here we will have to mention the path and the video name which we want to keep for the capturing image okay the capturing video so the path what i'm going to do is uh i'm going to give that same particular folder that images folder itself and uh, here uh, let me just create a new folder called as a uh, uh, let me create a new uh, directory directory is nothing but folders okay let's say captured underscore 
images underscore videos so this is going to be the location so let me just copy the path of that we have an option called as copy path so let's go to that let me say open in explorer itself so that i can get that path okay so from here let's capture that path let's close this one and first give that location over here and change the uh, backward slashes to forward slashes like this and here okay at the last i'll just name it as a output file dot avi avi is the format of the file which i want to keep next uh, parameter will be uh, something called as uh, uh, the video codec okay the video codec so first uh, let's create that video codec from uh, cv2 dot video video writer underscore 4cc 4cc is the codec okay which we want to apply for our particular capturing video so i'll just use star symbol and say we have to include all of them okay all so we are using star symbol and then in single quotes you will have to give it as xvid okay so these are the video codecs okay video codecs which i want to use all the video codecs which i want to use on the particular window which we are capturing so simply i'll name it as a 4 f o u r c c itself okay so 4 cc is a library so simply i'll name it as 4 cc itself and that will be the second parameter which we are going to get passed over here after the file name which we have mentioned over here so let me just come to the next line and give that uh, as 4 cc variable and the next parameter which i want to keep here is the frames per second so let me just keep it as 20 frames per second so i'll give it as a float value 20.04 and finally we'll have to mention the size of the frame which we are capturing so let me just keep it as 640 comma 480 as a tuple so this is going to be the way we are going to capture the video okay we are going to capture the video okay now all we are doing is we are saying that whether we are capturing the video frame by frame or not and that will be the result variable whether it will be true or false and we are going to be capturing each and every frame so here we are capturing the height and width of the frame uh, and that too in grayscale and then later on okay what what we are trying to do is this okay uh here i'm going to use that out reference variable which we have just created for the video writer class so this is the variable and then we are going to use the write function w r i t e write function to write that particular captured frame okay captured frame so this time uh here that is this each frame that is a variable Okay, that is the variable over here which you have to pass and on the left side you will have to mention that uh, window which it is capturing okay so simply let me just name it as a uh, of frame itself okay frame or ame frame just like that okay now here we are writing uh, each and every frame okay as a frame itself so that is what we have named it over here okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to give the user a chance okay to save this file okay save this file okay and i am going to mention make sure that that video if it is getting uh, opened and if it is uh, reading live stream okay then only we have to do the right operation okay so what we will do is we'll put it here only in an if condition saying that if uh, the result variable okay the result variable here if it is true okay which means we are streaming live okay if it is true then only what we will do we'll capture the height weight uh, sorry height width uh, and then we'll write all those things and then if the person clicks on the queue button then it will close the window so let me put that in the indentation of this if statement so like this so like this if it is not capturing then only we'll come to the else part and simply break the program here itself so this is how we can write a code to capture the video one by one okay which we are seeing on the screen okay once uh, it is done we are going to release the video also that is frame by frame and 
the writing portion the out variable also we are going to release and then we are going to destroy all the windows this is how you can save okay or write the frame which is getting captured on the screen using the cv2 library so let me just do the code entire code once let's get rid of this uh, extra white spaces so this is the entire code for that okay so now let me just save the program and let's run the program once so in a few moments it is going to start my default webcam of my desktop okay uh, so i see the problem now why we are not getting that video here is a where we have made a mistake okay so i am right function is just the frame okay each and every frame which we are capturing on the screen that's it okay and once we are uh, written the file okay then we have to show the image so one parameter was extra so we were not getting that output okay so now let me just restart the program once again so let's me right click and uh, let's run the code so now in a few moments it's going to start the webcam of my desktop so as you can see we are having the live stream right now and then as soon as i quit click on the q button so it's the video is going to stop and uh, You'll be seeing a file got created in this captured image video folder so let me just go to there and here is, is that file that is called as output file dot avi so let me just right click on that let's say open in file explorer and let's go to that particular file so this is that particular file and uh, you can use any one of your uh, video editors to play that file like this okay so this is how you can store that particular live stream as a video in your desktop or in your hard disk locations using cv2 library so the next topic i want to talk about in cv2 is how to draw uh, geometric shapes uh, like lines rectangles circles and all those things so first of all let me just create uh, one more file now uh, let me just say right click go to new say python file called as uh, uh, shapes shapes.py Okay, so automatic the py extension is added uh, automatically. So first, uh, let me import the cv2 library very fast too, and then to the image I want to read. So I'm going to use the cv2 dot im read function, and uh, we'll give the path and the image that is, uh, and I want to read it in uh, color scale. So I'm going to give it as one. Okay, then uh, whatever the image we are going to read, okay, we are going to show it on the screen. So cv2 dot im function is there so img is the image which we are going to show this is the image and we have to display the window so you just have to give any name to that so i'm going to say a display image okay you can name anything and then we'll uh, say cv2 dot weight key okay i'll put it as zero so that it stays for an immediate period of time then cv2 dot destroy all windows is once we have done with our program so now what we have to do is before uh, uh, first of all let me go and uh, write down the path of that image uh, let me copy it from the previous program itself and let's keep it here okay so let me remove the extra double quotes from here okay so pna.jpg is the image okay which we are going to display on the screen and let me just uh, run the code and just show you that uh, this is the image we are getting see right now in color image because of this one so this is the default uh, structure okay of a cv2 program how to read an image and how to show the image on the screen okay now when you have read this image when you have read this image just before showing i'm going to say that uh, cv2 dot there is a line function okay line function and uh, here See guys it takes uh, like first parameter is the image which we are seeing and then point one and point two point one will be the starting point and point two will be the ending point and uh, next you have to mention the color okay in which color uh, what type of color you want to see the line in and uh, then you, you can mention the thickness of that particular line okay so these are these will be all the parameters which we will be using so first of all 
the image which we are putting the line on is this particular variable that is the img so and now the starting point point one from where it has to start so i'll have to give it as a x and y so i'm going to say zero comma zero i want to start from the beginning okay then i want to have some point where uh, let's say i'm choosing 125 comma 125 okay so this will be the ending point of the line and then we will have to say the rgb colors red green and blue colors okay but uh, in cv2 it's uh, like this so so first it will be blue okay then it will be green and then it will be r so blue green and red so it comes as alphabetical order okay from ascending to descending order so we will have to give it something like that see if i want blue color means i will say 255 comma 0 comma 0 like this and uh, let's say the thickness let's th let's keep the thickness as uh, let's say 10 10 pixels and let me save it and let's run the code once again I run shape and you are going to see from 0 comma 0 it started until here we are getting in blue color okay and suppose if you want in green color so let me press the escape button and the image will go you want the green color means remove this 255 and say 0 and here in in between you have to say 255 let's save the file and just run the image once again and you are going to see a green color this one and if you want the red color uh, first let me just uh, press the escape button to make that window go away and here you just change it to zero and let's make this one as 255 and uh, let's bring this image uh, to let's say uh, almost towards the uh, center of the screen uh, 255 comma 255 let's save it and let's run the code okay so as you can see we have got red color line from the starting of this uh, x and y that is 0 comma 0 till 255 comma 255 like this or you want uh, the rgb versions okay the blue green and red you can choose any colors in between 0 to 255 so let's say 125 comma or let's say 45 okay and let's save it and let's run the code okay uh, so we can say stop and rerun so let me just go to the file let me just close this one so as you can see some pink pinkish type of a color line we are getting to see on the screen so let me press escape and this is how you can draw a line okay so we have the line function to draw a line but if you want we have many other functions so first of all let me say print dir okay dir is an inbuilt function which shows what and all the functions are available for whatever the module which we type over here okay so first uh, let me just uh, uh, run this code and see in the output screen okay you will be able to see all the functions okay all the functions which we can use okay which we can use to do any kind of operations using the cb2 library so these are all the functions which we are seeing on the screen so in this one only okay line is one of those functions which we will be using okay and just like this okay let me just uh, minimize the code okay and if you want to draw uh, let me just uh, comment of this okay let me just comment it off okay let me save it and first uh, let's run the code let's run the code once again and here here is that particular image and uh, let's close the window Okay, and first of all, let's make this uh, come towards the right side of the screen. So I'll say move to right top, and the output screen is here. Okay, so let me just stop the program. Okay, and save it, and let's rerun the program. Okay, so this is how you can get the particular image. Okay, let's press the escape button, and let's remove this. Let's run the program again. So now you'll be able to see all of them printed like this side of the screen of the program okay and seeing all these functions okay so these are all the functions okay, which you can use one by one in the cb2 library okay so inside that one only we have used first function that is the line function okay now let's say i want to use uh, some other functions uh, let's say uh, i want to draw an arrowed line so i'm going to say img uh, is equal to okay you can uh, simply uh, give some names like this on the left side the, i can say cv2 dot okay you, you can use the arrowed line function so this is the function which takes the same image on which we want to 
draw okay which we want to draw and it says point 0.1 and point 0.2 it is asking then the color thickness and line style and all those things okay so let me use this function and first uh, let us input the image on which we are supposed to draw okay and then i want to say 0 comma uh, 255 okay from the starting point will be this one okay and here i want to come exactly in the center so 255 comma 255 that is the exact center of the image and let us give a blue color line so let's say 255 comma 0 comma 0 so this is the color and uh, thickness you can say as 5 okay, you can choose anything 1 2 3 4 5 anything okay so now let's rerun the code and as you can see pink color line is a normal line and the blue color line which you are getting from 0 comma 255 this is the starting point and 255 is this center of that particular image so this is how you can draw an arrowed line in your particular image so just like this line function and uh, arrowed line functions suppose if you want to print uh, a rectangle so i'm going to use a uh, cv2 dot rectangle function is there so in this one first of all you have to give the image on which you want to draw the rectangle and then first you have to select the starting uh, point of the rectangle from where it has to start so let let's say uh, we want to start from uh, uh, 125 comma 125 okay we want to start from there so let me give it as 125 by 125 and then this is the starting point and then you have to give the ending point as well x comma y both so let me say like this uh, 250 comma 2 okay this will be the ending point of the rectangle and then you will have to choose a color okay between the blue green and red okay let's say uh, we choose green so 0 comma uh, 255 comma 0 and finally the thickness uh, i'm going to choose it as 5 okay so let's save this and let's run the image okay so as you can see we have got the rectangle like this okay and uh, let's say uh, we make the starting uh, point somewhere here so let me just first close the program and let's make this uh, uh, t comma 250 that that might be the starting of that rectangle and let's let's make it as 350 by 350 okay this will be the ending point let me just right click run it and as you can see we have provided a rectangle on that particular image okay now let me just close the program and let's do one more okay let's draw a circle so in order to draw a circle i'm again going to use the same variable img okay and i'm going to use cv2 dot circle function and provide the image on which i want to draw a circle and here we have we will have to give the starting point from where center of the circle will start so i'll simply say 250 comma 250 will be the point where i want to see the circle okay that will be the center okay and uh, radius you can give it as 50 okay 50 and then the next argument is going to be the color so let's say uh, 0 comma uh, 255 or let's do it in red color so let me give it as 0 comma 0 comma 255 okay and then there will be the final thickness let's say only two pixels of thickness is more than enough for our circle so let's run the code and as you can see exactly in the center we have created a circle okay at 250 comma 250 now instead of two pixels okay if i give it as minus one or let's do let this be at two itself okay and let me draw one more circle let me just copy that code and paste it over here so this is going to be the new circle uh, let's say this i have kept it as 45 250 comma 250 and uh, radius will be this much and in let's say let's do it in green color okay i'll give both okay a mixture of both uh, green and red color okay so 0 comma 255 comma 255 and here if i give it as minus one okay what it will do is it will fill out the entire portion of the circle and it will give you a solid color okay so let me just run the code uh, let me just close this one first okay so as you can see it's it has come in some kind of a yellow shape color okay but that is a combination of the green and red so here we can see we'll get the whole solid color like this okay we are not going to get the shape of the only outer circle anymore that is because of this parameter called as minus one so let me just uh, run the code once again by 
removing that minus one and just keeping it as one. So one becomes a thickness. Okay, so let me just run the code once again. So not in bug mode. Okay. Uh, close that file. Just run it again. So as you can see now we have we are getting the thickness of only one. That is the outer circle part. Okay. And if I change this to minus one, minus one, and let's rerun the code. Okay, so as you can see, we'll get the solid of any particular diagram we want. So this is how you can choose to whether to get a hollow or whether to get the full code when drawing your particular images or shapes. Now let me show you if you want to type some text on top of the image. Okay, what you have to do? So let me just uh, come here and say. Uh, like this okay they will we'll print it here at the beginning so let me just get rid of this extra white spaces and uh, let's say image equal to and uh, i'm going to use cv2 dot there is a function called as put text put the text okay the first parameter is the image on which we want to write the text okay and uh, second one is the actual text which we want to see on the screen so i'll say ecodrs okay so this is the decoders is the name which i want to see on the screen okay and here the next parameter will be the point from where it has to start okay so uh, let me just simply give it as a like a 10 comma uh, 300 okay so this must be the point from where x and y point it has to start okay the next parameter is the font style okay next parameter is the font style which we want to keep on so font style okay let me keep it as a folder just before that variable using like cv2 dot okay you have uh, lots of font size so you can just uh, type font underscore and you are going to get all these these are all the font styles which we want okay so you can choose any one of them you have simplex you have complex you have duplex anything so let me just simply choose uh, any one of them for time being that i'll choose font uh, hershey's uh, simplex okay you can choose any one of these or font italics also you can choose so this is the font that is the extra parameter which we have added and then next one is the font size okay so let me just give it as 5 and then uh, the next parameter you have to give it as in which color you want so let me just uh, put it in white so 255 comma 255 comma 255 makes it uh, the white color and the next parameter i want to so is the thickness okay so let me just give that also as 5 and next one okay you will have to give the uh, parameter with so that one will be the line type of cv2 dot okay you will just have to say line like l i uh once again get rid of that l i underscore so you have like uh a a underscore four or underscore eight like this so let me just choose uh the a a itself so this should be the line type of the line which we are trying to write on the image so let me just now uh, save the file and let's rerun the file itself okay so as you can see exactly it is starting from 10 comma uh, what is the point here so it's saying a 10 comma 300 okay so 10 comma 300 it has started okay the font size is a little bit big okay so let me just uh, change the font size a bit so that uh, it takes up uh, okay so let me just keep it as three and here also thickness also let's uh, keep it as three okay so let me save it and let's see on the file they run shapes and as you can see we have printed this okay but since it is coming on top of all the geometric shapes i'll make it a little bit down okay so let's make this as a let's say 400 should do it so let's give the code okay so here it is let me close previously so as you can see we have just made the code has come a little bit down okay and uh, i will do 500 okay 500 or let's say 450 okay 450 should be fine i guess so let me just save it and uh, run shapes so as you can see we have printed decoders text on our particular image now so this is how we can draw images or we can draw shapes on our images but uh, i want to show you one more thing that if you don't have any image to read or uh, you want to do all these uh, geometric shape operations uh, so what you can do is you can use numpy to create uh, like a ba black color background image or white color background image and then you can uh, uh, draw shapes on that okay so what i'll do is uh, i'll use a numpy so first you will have to import the uh, numpy library so let me say numpy 
as np and then i'm going to say uh, the image okay which i want to create using numpy is all zeros so let me say that eros zeros is a function in numpy so let me use that and here as a list okay i'm going to say i want pi 12 comma 5 12 okay comma means 5 12 by 5 12 will be the width and height of that particular image in three dimensions okay in three dimensions and all of them should be numpy's np dot unsigned integer which takes like eight bytes of memory space so like this so this is how i'm going to create a black color image okay all of zeros okay all of zeros and on that particular black image i'm going to draw all this numerical shapes like how we had done earlier on this particular image so let me just save the program right click let's say run shapes and as you can see we have created a black color image okay 512 by 512 and we have drawn this particular shapes on that okay so this is how you can use numpy as well to create your images so let me just click on white escape button and that program will go away now the next topic i want to show you is how uh, here uh, let me go to go back to this file okay, as you can see we were uh, capturing live video okay and we were saving it okay and now here what happened was here we were capturing this uh, height and width in 640 by 480 frame now let me just uh, make uh, one more file over here uh, let me say python file okay setting uh, video property properties So first uh, let me just uh, copy the code uh, like how we have to capture the uh, live stream so let me just keep it here or let me project window required okay so let me just get rid of this one okay we are not going to save that file or anything so we are just going to capture the live stream and we are going to set uh, some of the properties so as you can see here it says whether the video is getting captured or not and we'll print it on the screen it will say yes the video is getting captured so that's result uh, re, re sult will be true okay now what we will do is uh, we will uh, say while the video is getting captured okay you can just say video capture is opened or you can simply say it as true as well so let me just remove this and say true and here while it is true keep on getting the result Okay, so let me just this indentation proper like this and if uh, that result is equal to equal to true okay uh, then uh, whatever we are we had captured like this okay so these two statements so i don't want it here okay i'll just put it uh, exactly over here itself as soon as the video gets captured start printing the height and width of the frame okay so this is how we can uh, using the get function we can get uh, the height and width of the video frame okay now uh, if you want to set uh, the height and width uh, property for your video you just have to use this variable name which we have kept and you have to use a set function okay you have to use the set function and write down this property so saying that okay the width uh, okay width is going to be this much so uh, let me say width uh, i have set it as um, let's say four uh, uh, let's do let's do 600 okay with i have set it to 600 and just like this uh, let me just uh, write it over here let me say captured video dot set okay we are going to use the set property and say we are going to set the height of that image or that video to something like this uh, let's say 1280 pixels or something okay so this is going to be the height and width of the image or the video which we are capturing from the live stream okay and after that uh setting the height and width i'll use uh, these two statements once again to print it on the screen that what was the height uh, what was the default height this will be the default height uh, of the video and now we have set a new height and width uh, for the video and uh, we'll print those new height and width which we have taken okay and now this uh, writing code is not required so let me just remove it off okay so we'll we are printing a grayscale video okay so if it is true then we are going to show then quit and all those things and then this is also not required because we have just uh, removed that part of the code which was writing code so this is the entire code right now okay which we are seeing the gray color video on the screen so let me just save it 
and just make this window a little bit larger so that we can see properly so right click a video set property let let it be running and as soon as the video starts okay the webcam starts so this is the default uh, uh this thing okay the video which got captured okay and uh, we're not seeing a video on the screen so let me just see ah you okay, know it is saying for 640 by 480 that is the default size of the video which is getting captured okay so here is that window so let me go here and see guys my default camera which i'm using is a logitech uh, webcam so that's its default size uh, okay is 640 by 480 even though i have given here as a uh, 120 uh 1280 by 600 okay so let me just go to the code and show here can you see here we have given 1280 and 600 okay it's a very big number but uh, by default okay by default it is showing as 640 by 480 itself so it depends upon the camera size okay of the default webcam whichever you are using Okay, so let me just on escape. Oh, sorry, we have uh, put the Q button for the quitting. Okay, so this is how you can set uh, some video properties on the video which you are trying to capture. Okay. Oh, but here one thing I forgot to mention, like uh, these properties. Okay, these properties which we are using here, CV two dot cap property frame width, the frame height, and all those things, they are given some default numbers. So let's say see the width. Uh, they have given a number called as uh, three okay and for height they have given a number called as four so instead of writing here the entire thing like this cv2 dot uh, cap property frame height width uh, so you can just use that default numbers as like three and four like that that also will work perfectly fine so change it here to 400 uh, sorry four and uh, while getting the property also you can say get that third property like this like this also it can be done so let me put and put it over here let's Save the file and rerun the file once again. Okay, so let's uh, say run setting video properties. Okay, and you are going to get the live stream starting from the webcam. Okay, so here the webcam should start any point now. So it's saying we have started capturing the original. We are getting the values that is 40 by 480. That is the default size of the camera. Okay, and now this is the next size okay, which we have mentioned over here that is this uh, 1280 by 600 so as you can see we have got a bigger video file right now okay so let me just press on the q button and that will be gone okay so this is how you can add some properties and different width and height property for your particular video now let me show you how you can uh, print uh, this height and width uh, which you are getting from the video on this frame itself okay so let me just uh, first remove this uh, code this is not required. so let me just comment it off okay whatever the default height and width uh, is there okay we are going to get that and uh, make it as a text uh, and print it on the image or the video file which we are showing uh, live streaming okay so first what, what you have to do you have to create those text uh, so you have to come inside this uh, if that result is equal to equal to true then what i will do i'll say i want to create a text so but first i'll choose the font type for that so cv2 dot okay i'm going to say font underscore you can use hershey's plane duplex complex anything okay so let me select this as a complex itself okay this is the font type okay then let me create the text for which i want to show on the screen so let me say a string variable that is the wdth width is this much so width hyphen will be concatenated using the string function and we'll say the captured video dot get the value three three means the width of the file okay width of the video so that is going to be the width so it is going to say width is this much and to that one i'm also going to add the height so let me just give some space and say height h e i PhD height is this much so I'm going to concatenate so using the str function so the captured video dot get the value four that will be the height of the video okay now what we are going to do we are going to say we are going to show this particular thing on that frame okay on that frame using the cv2's text function 
okay put text function so uh, let me uh, use the variable uh, frame frame itself so let me say it like this frame frame is equal to cv2 dot put text okay we are going to put the text on that frame that frame uh, so that frame is going to be this particular each frame which we are capturing on the screen so let me just uh, copy that name okay and put it on that like this okay so we have mentioned that on this particular each frame we are going to put this particular text okay so let me come up here and say this is the text we want we want to put and uh, let me just keep this uh, on the left side also as each frame variable itself so it will be very easy to understand okay so the next uh, argument will be the point from where you want to see the text so let me just simply give it as 50 10 comma 50 there is the x and y point from where we want to see and uh, this is going to be the font style okay and uh, the next argument is going to be the font thickness so uh, i'm simply going to give it as one okay that is going to be the size uh, of the font and then let's uh, give some color so let me say uh, 0 comma uh, or 255 comma 255 okay and then next we have to display the thickness of the text okay thickness of the text which we are doing and next one is the type okay the line type so i'm going to say l i n e underscore you have a a underscore four underscore uh, eight all those things so let me just choose this one and uh, let me just make it in separate separate line so that uh, we can see the entire code separately like this. okay so this is the whole code of the text which we are going to put on that particular this thing okay and uh, i don't think we need to show it in grayscale or anything okay we just have to show that uh, particular image so let me just copy and paste it over here so let me just save the file and let's run it so when i'm running the code so it's going to start my default camera live stream and you'll be able to see the height and weight of the image okay of the captured image here at the top of the okay video so as you can see 640 by 480 is the default height and width of the video which is getting captured okay so this is how you can put uh, any text uh, which you are getting from the screen okay so let's uh, click on the q button and that video will be gone okay so this is how you can put uh, any kind of text uh, on the screen okay and uh, one more thing uh, let's uh, do one thing one more thing that is uh printing uh, the current date and time on top of the video itself so for that what we'll have to do is first we will have to import uh, the date time function so, sorry not date time function date time module so let me come up here and say import date time let me save the file and come here at the bottom okay and now what you have to do is you have to make the date as a string so that you will be able to show it on the screen okay so text how we have created here a text we will, we will create a text of that date itself okay so let me just come up here and uh, make a new variable called as a uh, date date text okay date text is the one which we want to create so i'm going to use the str function to make it as a string variable okay and now i'm going to use the date time module date time module from that okay there is a function called as now okay which will give me uh, sorry uh, date time okay in that we have one more function called as date time itself that has a function called as now so i'm going to use that to get the current date and time okay and now just like how we have uh, printed okay how just like how we have printed the, this text just like that only let me just create this variable once again okay here at the bottom okay and uh, on this frame okay how i was printing the text okay in yellow color okay just like that only instead of this text right now i'm going to say date text okay and this uh, let me start from 30 comma 50 okay it will be just below the height and width property we will be seeing the time date and time of the current video which is getting captured on the screen okay so let me just uh, save the file 
let me right click and let me run the code uh, in a few moments it's going to start my webcam uh, let me wait for that okay so as you can see okay we have uh, we have overlapped uh, the text on top of each other so we'll have to adjust uh, this point 30 comma 50 is not enough so let me just uh, close the file okay and uh, let me just keep this as 40 and let me keep this as 60 okay or let me make this as um, 60 okay let's start from 60 comma 60 not uh, this so let's make it uh, 10 comma 30 okay so let's save it and let's run the code once again okay so let's wait for a moment to start the webcam okay so as you can see we have a uh, height and width at the top okay and uh, the date the current date and time of the captured video here on the screen like this okay so let me just wait this is how you can show current date and time and even the text which we have captured from the video frame itself that is three and four okay height and width of the code now the next topic i want to talk about is uh, how to handle the like events or uh, like mouse click events or uh, keyboard events such as operations which you can perform using cv2 so for that let me just create a new file so let me go here and create a new the python file called as a uh, mouse events underscore open cv so here i'll import the libraries first so let me just write down i want to import some file as np then i want to import the cv2 library let's say impot cv2 and now i want to create one event but for that first of all let me print out uh, all the functions which are available in uh, cv2 library so you can do that by saying print and uh, using the dir function directory function and you just have to pass the module name or the library name and uh, now let's save it and let's run it so as you can see we have got multiple functions which we can use from cv2 library and uh, inside this uh, okay we don't need everything so what i'll do is i'll just loop through only the events and i'll print only the events inside the cv2 library so i can use uh, the list comprehension method and i can loop through uh, the dir of cv2 function so i'll say for i in uh, dir of cv2 so i have to get back all the i values all the i values which are only the events from this particular function so i'll write an if condition over here saying that if ev ent okay if it is an event in our i okay so which will get me all the events and one by one let us print those events like okay so now i've commented this line okay and now this is going to print only the events See guys these are all the events for which we have the left uh, left button down okay left button up okay medium button click up down mouse wheel option mouse move option is there okay so these are all the flags which we can use for control button left button middle button and the right button like this and this is the flag for the shift key so like this so we have uh, these events inside the cv2 functions which we uh, cv2 library which we can use for our programming so let's get rid of this okay and now let me just comment it off and uh, we'll start with our coding part so the first program what which i want to do here is like uh, if i click on the left mouse button down so let me click as left mouse button down whenever i do this i need to print uh, the x and y location of the mouse click wherever it is happening on the screen so uh, let me say printing x and y coordinates so this is the mouse event which i want to capture okay and for this we'll be creating a function that is called as callback function so i will say like uh, it is a click event okay which will take uh, uh, the actual event which is going to happen that will, that can be the mouse click event and it is going to take the x and y uh, coordinates and we will have some kind of a flags okay that there will be the like, specific conditions and the parameters which we are going to enter 
into this particular functions and this will be our callback functions whenever a mouse click event is going to happen it is going to trigger this particular function to get the values of x and y so so the first thing i'm going to do here is i'm going to write an if condition saying that if the event okay see if this event okay is equal to equal to from cv2 library i'm going to extract or i am going to call this mouse down button left mouse down button which we can see here left mouse uh, left button down okay so that is going to be the event so you just have to call that function over here so you are saying event even left button down if uh, the event is the left button down then what needs to be done so we'll print the x value okay this x value whatever it's going to take and the y value so in between the x and y uh, we can uh, give some kind of a parameters like a uh, space or something or you can give it like a like a half hyphen symbol or also and then let me put it a comma and press the y see guys if the event is the left click button of the mouse then we will print on the screen the x and y values that is the coordinates and for this what we need to do is we have to create them as some font variables okay so first of all what i'm going to say is uh, uh, cv2 dot font that has to be in capital underscore hershey's simple hershey's complex plain everything is there okay this, so these are the fonts styles uh, which i want and then we will use the cv2 dot put text function okay which will put uh, this x and y value on the screen of that particular image so this uh, put text function first of all it's going to take the image on which we want to put the text and second of all will be the actual uh, text which we want to see here on the screen so here uh, let me just uh, make it as a string variable saying that uh, uh, str x y okay so these are the x and y string points so let me say it in string function as x plus some space and here a little bit of a comma in between the double quotes and then again the str function for y okay so this is going to be the string actual string which we are going to show on that particular image and then the next argument is going to be the x and y points that is the coordinates on which we want to see the text written on the image so those two arguments are these x and y so let me just write it here x comma y and the next will be the actual font which we have selected over here so this is going to be the font style and then it will be the font scale so let me just simply keep it as one or something you can keep from one to ten or any value you which you want to choose and the next argument after this would be the color which will we will have to give it as a tuple or uh, let's say uh, 255 comma 255 comma 255 if you give like this it becomes white color and uh, you can choose any any type of color so let me just say one uh 155 okay you can say 205 okay you can give any value between 0 and 255 so let me just simply keep it as 105 so this is going to be the color of the text and then finally the thickness of the line which we want to see okay so this is how we are going to write now this particular function okay and these are the function parameters if uh, at all we have a left click of the mouse event so first of all let's get rid of this output screen and we are going to check if everything is correct right okay this we have not defined it yet so that's why we are getting that uh, error and now finally to show the particular image so we'll have to say cv2 dot im show function and then the display window of that particular image Okay, I'm displaying image, so you will have to give that particular image as the parameter on which we want to put the text. So now, first, uh, let us define this uh, img variable uh, image. I want to create using the numpy all zeros function. The zeros function. So first, you will have to give the size of the image. So let me choose as by twelve comma five twelve comma three, and its data type is going to be np dot unsigned integer value which takes like eight bytes of memory and uh, next we will have to show 
that image so i am to function and show this particular image and on the left side you will have to say this is the image which i am going to show it's like a display window so i am simply going to give it as image window okay so like this we have defined our variable img itself and as you can see that error which we were getting under the img variable it's gone right now because it can find this variable name and it can put it here in this callback function whenever this callback function gets triggered or invoked now the next thing for us to do is using the cv2 library okay there is a function called as set mouse callback so let me call that function and this function is going to call this click event function whenever we click on this particular image anywhere in x and y location so the first argument is going to be like which window okay the which window or the display window you are showing on the screen okay this is a very very important step so here see intentionally i gave two different names for the displaying window but that is absolutely wrong so if you are displaying this particular window here also you should have the same name so let me just copy that name and paste it over here as well okay and instead of a space let us give it as a underscore in between so that there is no confusion okay it creates like a one display window which is displaying this particular image so this is this will be the first parameter which you are going to pass inside this function as a string variable and we'll have to put a comma and then we'll have to write this function's name that that is the callback function's name okay which should get triggered whenever this function gets called so once after this is done all you have to do is we have to wait for the wait key method so in order to stop the execution from by giving a zero as a parameter it will stay there for unlimited period of time then cv2 dot destroy all windows is the function destroy all the functions which all the windows which are getting shown to us on the screen okay now run the code okay so we are going to get this uh, black color window and now wherever we click uh, on this particular image okay we are going to get that particular x and y coordinates on the screen so if i click on the extreme left corner it okay if it x twelve comma 12 44 comma 44 like this let me just maximize the screen and show you. okay so these are the variables of x and y which we are printing on the screen so let me press the button and the program will disappear okay you can make the font size little uh, font scale as a little bit uh, smaller like making it like 0 0.5 0 0.6 anything like that okay now let me save the program once again and let's rerun the program okay you are going to get so and here see guys it's 8 comma 24 so anywhere you click it's going to print the x and y coordinates and this is happening only because of the left click button and if i click right click now i'm doing the right click option and it is not printing anything on the okay so this is how you can print the x and y coordinate okay like this on the left click of the mouse button now just like this we want we can create a right click event as well so in this particular function itself this whole code is for left click button and just like this only we can have one more if condition saying that if uh, the event is equal to equal to uh, some cv2 some cv2 library i want this time the right click event so let me just say it as event and let me come down and here as you can see we have our button down so let's use that colon then come over here okay so this time what i'll do is i'll just uh, print all the blue green and red color uh, scales from 0 to 255 whichever scale it is in those things will print it on the screen so first uh, let me take the variable like blue is equal to from the image we have to get uh, the y x and 0 values okay then for the green for the green color from our image okay whenever you click okay we are going to get the y get the x and we are going to get the first value okay then for the red thing you have to say from the image you get me the y comma x comma two value 
okay so these are going to be the values for red green and blue so let me just in one single line so that it will be for us to see which exact value we are getting it from okay and just like how we had created this font string value and uh, uh, the things which we want to show on the image same exact things we can copy once again and paste it over here and we can say this let this be the font style and uh, here we have uh, a string called as string rgb coordinates of the uh, clicked uh, value and then here instead of x uh, we want to give so here the blue color then we'll put a comma after that and then here we'll put the string green color okay then again we'll, uh, we'll concatenate uh, one more comma like this and then finally the string the red color which we have chosen from here okay so this is going to be the string which we want to show on the screen okay on the screen and uh, let's grab this particular variable and replace it with this variable here okay and you can choose a different color if you want for this uh, right click okay so let me just choose it as a uh, zero comma to fifty five comma right like this some different color for the right click 250 and uh, its thickness also we can make it as 3 okay and now that is going to be the display window of that particular image. okay now uh, let me save the program and let's rerun the program okay so we have two clicks one is left click we are getting in this uh, green color and here I will right click now so it says 0 comma 0 comma 0 okay and it's coming in yellow color and if I right click again and again anywhere okay all the zero uh, red green blue okay values are going to come as zero 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 itself because this uh, background is a black and white okay this is a black image because I have chosen here all zeros itself so that's the reason you are getting all as zeros itself only the left click button okay it, you are getting the actual numbers like this but if you want to see the actual RGB values of any particular image okay we cannot do it on the black color image okay so what i'll do is uh, i'll just uh, exit this program and instead of creating uh, a black color image like this you can use the any one actual image from your hard disk okay using the cv2 library okay you are going to say i am read function once again and first you have to give the location and then the name of the file which you want to see okay so we have a uh, uh, this images folder is there okay and uh, we have lots of images like this and uh, we can choose any one of the images uh, let me choose a colored image okay why not use uh, the lena image itself okay we, why not use this image itself so let me just uh, grab this a open in file explorer okay it's going to open the file location like this and you can copy the path from the top and lena.jpg that is what we have to give here in our code so let me just close all of these okay this is the file this is not required okay let me click that file that is the mouse event okay so here first let you let me put the path of the image and put a forward slash and name of the file that is from jp but only one thing you have to remember is you have to make all the backward slash and forward slash so let me make that as fast as possible okay so now our variable img is this particular image okay which i just showed you that is lina.jpg now let me get this of this window and let's run the code right now so let's run the code and as we are saying we are getting the lena.jpg image and uh, if i left click on that okay it is going to give me the x and y coordinate and if i right click okay see guys the hat color red green and blue okay that coordinates or that color values it is displaying on this like this okay anywhere you click okay it is going to capture the red green blue numbers of that particular image and it is going to show us on the screen okay left click will give the coordinates and which we are seeing here at the outputs 
so this is how you can capture mouse events it can be left click or it can be a right click or mouse buttons or any any events like that now i want to talk about okay, let, first let me get rid of this out now i want to talk about how you can get uh, the uh, properties of that particular image which we are trying to see okay so first uh, let me just uh, make a new file for that i can file in that same package so letting uh, let me call it as getting image properties properties so le first let me just import the cv2 library used to read the image so let me say im dot read is a function so let me just back to the code and let me just copy this okay let me say uh, let me just copy these two because i want to read and i want to show that particular image on the screen so so these are the two things which you have to do you have to read and then show the image on the screen and at the last we have to use the weight key to uh, set the weight property just copy that and paste it here last okay now before showing this okay before showing this image let me get all the properties of this particular image so first of all i want to get the image dot shape okay so we have a keyword called a shape and then uh, this thing will uh, print it on the screen okay so let me put it inside a print statement and uh, what this does is it will uh, give you or it will return you number of rows columns and all the channels okay channels are nothing but the red green blue channels that's it okay and then i want to print uh, that image size uh, both uh, in x and y direction how much is the pixels values and all those things pixels then let me use the print statement uh, to use the data type of the particular image whether we have obtained that image data type or not then finally what we'll do is uh, we'll also try to get uh, the blue green and red color values uh, from the image so what we'll do is uh, first what we'll you will have to do is uh, you will have to remove or you will have to split uh, the blue so let me just keep it as uh, b g r okay it happens in uh, alphabetical order so that's why blue is in first green is in second and red is in the third position okay so from cv2 library you say dot split there is a split function okay and you will have to pass your image which you are trying to split okay what this will do is it will uh, whatever the pixel values are there it will remove the blue green and red separately on the screen okay then uh, what you can do is you can just uh, print those values on the screen so let me just uh, right click and run the code okay so this is that particular image okay so it is saying okay, as you are seeing the size is 512 by 512 uh, and it's in three dimensions so that's why we are getting three here as a point and uh, it says so we have uh, the blue green red values and even the data type of the image the size is also defined by these three parameters shape size data type okay so this is how you can print all the parameters of that particular image now let me tell you one more uh, function from cv2 that is called as merge so here what we have done is from the image we have taken b g r and r values and we have split them but if you want the image back okay and to merge all the black uh, sorry blue green and red values then what you can do is you can store that uh, values in that image itself by merging all the three values but when you are merging it you will have to give it as a tuple so b comma r so this is how you can merge back the values and get the back image back as the original image itself. so let me just uh, right click and uh, run the code and as you can see uh, it says uh, okay here i have done a small mistake it is not merger it is just merge function so let me just save the file and run it once again so as you can see we have got back our original image by merging all the blue green red values so let me just hit skip button and 
we are going to stop the program. Oh, now let me tell you a concept called as ROI in CB2. So it is the region ION of interest. Okay, what this does is we can extract any one particular region using the CB2 library. So let me just show you. So here we have one image. Let me go and show that image to you first because that is uh, messy.jpg image okay and if you want we can extract only this uh, ball part of the region or only the face part of the region or only the hand or the leg part of the region so that is the region of interest roi and we can extract uh, that region from any one particular image just by using the left click of the button so this is what we are going to discuss here in the next session so first uh, uh, let's do that uh, just change our image name to messy.jpg and we will just uh, save the file and we'll just run the code once okay so we have the code over here okay so first of all what i'll do is i'll just extract uh, this uh, region of interest that is the ball part okay and we can place this ball anywhere we want so for that first you should know the starting point of the coordinates of the ball and the ending point okay by trial and error method i got the x and y values of uh, this particular ball so what i'll do is i'll just uh, write it down okay even you guys can do by trial and error method okay but now i have got the actual points from where the ball is starting and from where the ball is ending so i'll just put those coordinates over here uh, 340 then i'll say it is ending at 330 colon 390 okay so this is the starting point okay of the ball and this is the ending point of the ball okay and now this uh, actual ball that image of that particular ball that is a roi let me write it here in comments the region of interest okay this can be copied pasted on any part of the image which we want now what i'll do is uh, in my image i'll choose a different coordinate where i want to keep the ball so let me just keep it at 273 colon 333 okay this will be the starting point and uh, 100 colon 160 okay so this will be the new location where i want to see the particular ball so, so i'll just put this ball variable which we have taken here on the left side and we'll paste it over so in this new location okay this will be the starting point this will be the ending point and you'll be able to see ball has been placed here in our particular image now let us run the code and check for the result so let me just run getting the image so as you can see we have just copied this particular region of interest and placed it over here and uh, you can just see there is one square box around it okay that is the entire area which we selected from this particular region okay so this is called as the region of interest and that region of interest we can copy paste and we can work on that particular region itself just by getting that particular values from where it is starting and from where it is ending so let me just hit the escape button and it will stop the program the next thing i want to sh show is like how you can merge or how you can add two images at the same time and show it on the screen so here what we have done is here we have uh, read the first image which we have named it as img and just like that only i will use uh, one more image so i'll call it as img2 so I'm two is equal to I'm simply going to use this uh, same function once again. Copy that and put it in the next line here. And this time I'm going to read uh, an image called as Open CV logo. This one. Okay. So this is the one which I want to merge with the messy dot jpg file. So let me just uh, get rid of this name and uh, write that name. That is Open CV logo dot jpg. Just get rid of the last part of the code. Okay, so we have two images right now, IMG and IMG2, which we want to add them together. Okay, but we have to note that both the images should be of the same size or else we won't be able to add them. So suppose, let's say I have uh, this particular image. Okay, and I'm going to use the cv2.add function to add or merge IMG and IMG2, which we are trying to take. And 
I'm just simply going to give a variable name for this one is uh, like a, a final image okay or combined image like this anything you can name it combined image let me give it as img like this and uh, this is the image which I want to show at the last so let me just uh, copy that name and place it over here instead of showing only the img part okay so if I run this code okay 100 percent I'm going to get the error because those two images uh, are not of the same size so let me just run the code and as you can see here it says okay we have an error in line number 13 so line number 13 is the one where we are trying to add the both the images img and img2 okay and the error see operation is uh, neither an array op array okay where has it uh, means it has to be in single dimension okay single dimensions means both of the images should be of the same dimension first of all we'll what we will do is we'll resize the array into one similar size so let's do that so before adding them together okay so let's come here at the top i'm going to say img uh img is equal to from cv to itself i'm going to resize function to resize it okay so this is what image i'm going to resize and here you'll have to mention the size so 512 by 512 that is the height and width of the particular image so same just like this only the image 2 also from cv to library i'm going to use the resize function to resize this img2 image and as it apple i will have to say 512 comma 512 itself okay so once uh, we have resized them to the same size we can add them together means the combined image okay so combined image we are showing it on the screen so one image okay will be messy image one will be the logo and both of them will be combined together and it will get displayed on the screen for us as you can see here we have the hand part here the leg part and everything this is how we can merge uh, two to three images or as many images as we want from the uh, add function of cv2 so this is how it can be done now let's uh, rerun the code once again okay and as you are seeing on the screen that right now the messy image and uh, as well as the cv logo image are almost the same weights okay but if i want to see uh, more of the messy image and less of the open cv logo image okay then we will have to add some weight to the messy image okay and we have to add reduce some weights of this logo image so that can be done by using the cv2's one more function okay that is called as add weight okay add weighted image instead of using add method so let me just uh, come here and uh, I'll just comment this part out okay so let's copy this code and write it once again here and since you are adding these two images okay i want to use add weighted image okay and uh, this will be the first source image of that uh, messy image which we are trying to read okay and uh, for that weight uh, can be chosen from zero to one okay so one being 100 percent right and point one being the lowest so what you can say is like if you want to see like 50 percent 50 percent of both the images then you can give the value as 0.5 here for the first image and for the second image also the weight you can give it as 0.5 okay and let the last uh, value which is uh, the comma value and uh, that should not get added as a scalar value to the image so that's we that's why we are giving here as zero so now first uh, let me just save this program and let's run the program once okay so as you can see both of them right now are 50 percent and 50 percent okay that will be the transparency of that okay now if i want more of messy image means you will just have to go uh, let's say this uh, i'll keep it as one and uh, this one i'll keep it as uh, sorry this i'll keep it as 0 0.9 closer to one and this i'll keep it as uh, the second image the logo image for that i'll keep it as 0 0.1 okay so both of them added together will become one value just save this and let's run the code right now so as you can see the open cv image is very 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 blurred okay we are very uh, it's like almost invisible but only one percent of that data is getting seen to us okay 
okay now you can just reverse that also if you want to see messy image like very light and the logo image very bright okay then i'll give it as 0.9 for the second image okay that is a logo image for the first image i'm keeping it as 0.1 let me save the program and let's run it as you can see the messy image is like very 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 light right now at 0.1 weight and open cv logo image is at 0.9 scale of the weight so this is how you can adjust the scales okay so let me just make it as 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 so that both of them will be same okay so you can give the weighted scales as well so let me get rid of this right so let's move on so this will be the end of the part one video of learning open cv and uh, in part two i will be going for the advanced operations which you can perform on the images and videos okay so thank you for watching please subscribe to my channel thank you very much